I hate kimchi. There, I said it. Before I had my first child, I loved all things sour. I was a big fan of dill pickles and all of the sour things that you could do, but I didn't yet know about fermenting because it wasn't part of my world and I didn't know how good it was for you. But then I got pregnant. And in the course of the pregnancy, my taste changed. And when I had my son, I didn't like anything sour anymore. But my kid loves everything sour, everything fermented, everything that's just got all of that just weird flavor he loves. So why am I here in fermented February with all of these fantastic people doing fermenting everything, including Anna from the Fermented Homestead who is sponsoring this. And by the way, I'll leave all links to all the channels doing this down in the description box below. But why am I doing this when I don't even like to ferment? Because I'm a good mom. <laughs> I do this because my son loves everything fermented and I, as your dehydrating BFF, want to show you how to do this as well. And in case we haven't met, I'm Darcy from the Purposeful Pantry where we dehydrate and other ways of preserving foods so that you can have shelf stable food on your pantry for your family for whatever you need it for. So let's talk about good and bad kimchi and how you can use it to dehydrate as I get these trays ready. The cool thing with this is yes, you can dehydrate kimchi. The thing is, is that you need to keep the temperature down below 115F, 46C, the lower the better, in order to keep all that good gut bacteria that you've been working on for that ferment healthy and alive during storage. It's kind of like it goes to sleep, just like sourdough does when you dry it. That's how you can do kimchi. So maybe you bought too much kimchi and you can't get it used up fast enough and you want to preserve it, you can put it on the shelf. If maybe you don't like the act of fermenting kimchi, but you love how it tastes and you want to be able to use it, you just don't want to keep it stored in your refrigerator, you can do that as well. And um, to tell you the truth, that's how we are. We don't like to actually ferment kimchi. So what we do is we go to the local Korean market that has these huge gallons that you see here uh, of kimchi available all the time. And they are fresh and in the refrigerated section to be used anytime you need it. Now, what is the difference between kind of good kimchi and bad kimchi? And I don't mean bad in a way that means that it's awful, but good kimchi is fresh fermented and you have to use it up when you use it up, but it can be dehydrated like we're doing here. Bad kimchi, not that it tastes bad, but it no longer has that beneficial uh, ferment behind it, is the kimchi that you may find that is shelf stable in a grocery store where it's been commercially canned. And usually that commercial canning process cans things at a high temperature that will kill off the beneficial bacteria that is in the, in the ferment. However, it still tastes good and you can still use it however you'd like to normally use it. Just know that that's the difference between the two. And in the course of dehydrating, we're keeping this down below 115F 46C to make sure that we can keep as much of the good bacteria and the good benefits as we can during dehydrating. Okay, we are in my dark, dingy uh, garage where I do all of my freeze drying and my dehydrating outside for things that need to be outside or if I've got overflow, this is where it is. So here are my trays. This bottom tray is the liquid tray. I kept some of the solids in it because that's what I just did. Didn't matter, it's not a big deal. So solid trays. And then here is our top tray. This is the parchment paper tray. And I wanted to reiterate, parchment paper alone, when it's super liquidy, will absorb that moisture. And it does not become non-stick like you would with fruit leather. So if you've got something that's got liquid, don't use parchment paper if you're worried about it. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you what this happened, what happens with it, what it looks like in the in the aftermath, so that you can see. So here we go. I'm gonna get this done. We are going to start the machine. We are going to start the machine and keep it under 105. We want to keep all those good, healthy probiotics in there. All right, it has been two full days and we're ready to turn this off. I've been checking on it to make sure it was drying well. And here we go. This is our tray of the sauce and the, the bits of kimchi kimchi sorry and it's going to come right off the trays it's going to be a bit messy i may not get it all off but that's okay i'll take what i can get then we have our regular kimchi more of it and it does look dark uh, i'm not going to worry about that because i did dry low enough it's just the way that this kimchi has turned it's this kimchi that's fine it's not hurt this is the fruit leather sheet that we use no that is this is the fruit leather sheet that we use. It's going to come right off just like that. 
And if it does stain this one, I'm fine with that. I use an old one, so if I can't fix it, I don't care. And then this is the parchment paper that I showed you that you can still see here where it has just soaked into the papers. And trying to get it off, it is going to come off, but we're going to lose quite a bit of that in the paper here that, that I won't be able to retrieve. So let's go get busy doing what we're going to do with it. Okay, what we're going to do is now is start taking off our trays. I'm going to fill up my pint and a half jar with dried kimchi, like just like this. Make a mess while we're doing it. I thought that would help. If it's not, I'm gonna make a bigger mess. It's gonna be easier to do later. Okay, this is the fruit leather sheet that I took off. I'll show you in a minute how it's gonna clean up. I have okay, a feeling it's, it's gonna it's stain gonna pretty badly. Clean. It's just the way that but this is stained. It doesn't matter to you. So you this can clean it the best you can. Set this one aside to use on other kimchi sheet. down the Throw road or other things like. Uh, peppers that you might have frozen those things can also stain sheets and that way you can have these kind of stain sheets that don't really do a lot of damage but as I've always said a stained sheet is the sign of a happy dehydrator in a full pantry now we're going to take our parchment paper and you can see where the parchment paper if you can see this see right here where the parchment paper has torn because in doing that the uh, the liquids have um, uh, absorbed into the paper and it's made it to where you know the paper is taking on moisture that most of that moisture and not you're not able to keep it all and you know what I'm gonna go ahead and get a bigger jar because we almost always need a bigger jar because my son wants all the options To use as he needs. I'll clean all this mess up in just a minute. Now I'm going to get this vacuum sealing because we're going to set this aside for a while and I'm going to start loading my Nutri Ninja um, container with the rest of this kimchi and start making a powder. So what I'm doing is adding a moisture absorber and a, an airtight lid, just like that. This will be gone within a week. I can tell you my son is going to go through this really quickly. He's going to put it on everything he eats from every meal for the next week. What I would typically tell you to do with this powder now is to condition the powder. It would be putting it back into your dehydrator on a tray or in a bowl or in a cake pan or whatever you can fit into your dehydrator. Run it on low heat, the lowest that you have for a little while to let the powders dry out or put it into your oven that has been preheated but turned off. You do not want to heat this up. You're just using that ambient heat to help reduce any moisture that this might have gotten in all of the processing that you've just done before you put it away for storage. But because I know this is going to go pretty quickly, I'm not concerned about it. I know it's so dry. It is so dry. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave it like it is. So let's go see what's for dinner. So for dinner tonight, my son has created his ramen bowl, which is ramen noodles that he uses, seasonings that he uses. Then we've added dried peppers, dried green onions, and dried mushrooms for his tonight. Now, and then there's some uh, seaweed that we added to it. So he's going to add his kimchi and kimchi powder. And if you want to know a way that I dehydrate something just like this, I dehydrate salsa to use as a condiment with our foods. And if you want to see that, watch this video right here. And don't forget, watch all the videos that are in the link in the description down below, including Anna from Fermented Homestead, that will help you with fermented, fer, 
that will help you learn so much more about fermenting and how you can do all the things. And don't forget, there's that giveaway. Make sure you go read that. And until I see you again next time, happy dehydrating and keep preserving.